Number 97. For each of the following compounds, state whether it is ionic or covalent, and if it is ionic, write the symbols for the ions involved. All right, so we went over the first part in the last two questions, so if you haven't done that, go back to those questions if you want more practice. We should know the difference between what an ionic compound is and what a covalent compound is, so let's first start there, because there's a lot of stuff that we're going to introduce in this problem. All right, so remember, an ionic compound is between a metal and a nonmetal. All right, so if you definitely see a metal anywhere in your compound, it is automatically a ionic compound, no exceptions. However, there are exceptions to this rule. <laughs> the first one is that there is only one scenario in which you could have all nonmetals and be an ionic compound. So I'm going to put that here. So you could either be a metal and a, met and a nonmetal. So this is number one. And the other example would be if you have two polyatomic ions coming together. All right. Now, usually, majority of the time, actually, I think all the time, all your polyatomic ions are always going to be just nonmetals. Now, you're probably saying, Christina, what? What are polyatomic ions? Well, good question. Insert this chart that I provided for you guys on the left-hand side. These are your common polyatomic ions. These are their names, what they look like, and the charges that they have. And yes, you should memorize all three of those, all right? There's basically no rhyme or reason, uh, you know, why these names are what they are. So, and I've tried for years to come up with simple acronyms, but unfortunately for this, there is really no other way to know your polyatomic ions unless you memorize them. So get flashcards, put the name on one side and put the symbol, the formula on the other side. So for example, you should know that ammonium, I'll just take it from the top here. Ammonium is always NH4 with always a plus one one charge. Remember, if you don't see any numbers and it's just, just a plus or a minus, it's always a one. So, uh, sulfite, the name sulfite is a polyatomic and it's always SO3 and that will always have a negative two charge. So those three things you should memorize, memorize the name, the number of elements that are in the polyatomic and what the overall charge is of that polyatomic. All right, I promise you it will work out in the end. You need to memorize them regardless if you really want to do well. So, and we will especially see these more next chapter. All right, so if you see that you have two polyatomic ions in a one single compound, it's going to be ionic as well. Now, covalent compounds, remember, are your nonmetal plus nonmetal. All right. So you could have a nonmetal and a nonmetal coming together, sharing electrons. That's covalent compound. So basically just you don't see a metal. Remember, metals are ionic. All right. So let's run through these. For A, now let's see. I'm just going to write them right next to here because the, the bottom is basically the periodic table and the, the chart that I provided. So I'll put the answers up top here. So for A, we have NF3. Well... We got to figure out where nitrogen is and where fluorine is on the periodic table. Nitrogen is right here. It's a nonmetal. And fluorine is basically right next to it. So these are two nonmetals. And two nonmetals, a nonmetal and a nonmetal, is a covalent compound. So I can say that A is a covalent compound. And with covalent compounds, we do not need to... Um, write the symbols. They only want it for ionic. So A is done. Okay, now B. B, A. Actually, for this one, I'm going to write, you know what I'm going to, I'm going to write all, all my work on the right-hand side, and then we'll just erase as we go, because it's going to be a lot. Okay, so for B, A, O, we have barium, and we have oxygen. Where are those um, elements on the periodic table. Well, oxygen is here. It's a nonmetal, but barium is down below here. Number 56. 
Barium is a metal, right? It's in the metal category. And oxygen is a nonmetal. As soon as you see a metal, this is right off the bat, it's going to be a ionic compound. Okay, so that um, answers the first part. Now, they say that for ionic compounds, we need to write the symbols. Now, this is something new. Basically, they want to know when this compound uh, breaks apart into its individual ions, what charges were the ions? You see for your polyatomic ions, they're always going to be a charge in the top right-hand corner. That's basically what they're asking for here. So when barium and oxygen came together, what were the charges in the upper right-hand corner? Was barium a plus? Was oxygen a minus? Et cetera, et cetera. This comes from two things. There's two ways that you could find out the charges. The, the, the best way is to know the valence rules or the charge rules, we'll say oxidation state, um, for your main group elements. So I'm going to put that over here. We're going to say oxidation states, states for your main groups. Now remember, your main group is group 1 and 2, so it's on this left-hand side, and then it's 13 all the way to 18. Memorize this um, trend, guys. Anybody in group one is always going to have a plus one charge when it wants to bind, which means that it wants to lose one electron. Remember, the plus actually means loss of electrons. The minus means gain because electrons are negative. So group one is plus one. Group two is plus two. Then you jump all the way to 13 because, remember, these are not your main group. Those are your transitions. There are no trends for oxidation states for those. So group 1 plus 1, group 2 plus 2, group 13 plus 3, and then plus 4 for uh, group 14. Now, why does this happen? Because everybody wants to be a noble gas, and the noble gases is group 18. So for noble gases... They don't want to lose or gain electrons, so they would be a zero charge because they're already noble gases. But now group 17, they can just increase their electron by one to get to be a noble gas. So instead of losing electrons, which are the pluses, they want to gain electrons. So they would be negative one, negative two negative three, and then actually group 14 is a plus or a minus 14, sorry, plus or minus four, depending on what the other element is. So we could figure this out by saying, oh, okay, well, barium is here and oxygen is here. Barium is in group two, so BA always would want to be a plus two, and oxygen will be a minus two. Now, this is how we get this compound. What we always do is we crisscross, they call it the crisscross method. You always crisscross the charges down. So this two would come down here telling me that I need two oxygens. This two, now we, when we crisscross, we don't bring down the positives and the negatives. We just bring the number down. So here, it would tell us that I need two bariums and I need two oxygens. For ionic compounds, you always simplify by dividing by the biggest number that they have in common. And I could divide this by two. And this would now be one barium and one oxygen. Hence, BA, there's a one here, secret one, and there's one oxygen. That's why it's only BAO. So for this one, it would be ionic compound, and the ions, the symbols, would be Ba2 plus or plus 2 coming together with oxygen 2 minus or minus 2. That's it. So that's the answer for B. Okay, C. So I'm going to erase this one. You see how there's going to be a lot of work here? But I don't mind. These are fun. I like these making compounds. They're kind of cool. All right, so for C, we have NH4. 2. CO3. All right. Well, I notice here that I have nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. I accidentally swapped those, swapped those, so carbon and oxygen. But you get the point, right? So if I went there, nitrogen is here, hydrogen is here, carbon is here, and oxygen's here. They're all in the blue category, so you might think that it's covalent. 
But this is the trick. Remember what we said before, right? Ionic compounds are when two polyatomics come together. That's why we have to be able to spot polyatomic ions. Now, if I looked here, this is NH4. Oh, okay. Well, look over here. Ammonium is NH4. You see how they're exactly the same? This two is just telling you that you have two NH4 groups. So you have two ammoniums in the compound. So this would be basically polyatomic number one. And then what about this one? We say, okay, well, this is CO3. And if I scan my common polyatomic chart, and it should be here. Let's just see, where is it? It should be here. If not, I'm going to add it. Right here it is. Carbonate, CO3, 2 minus. Do you see here that there is a CO3? And that matches this. Now, you might be saying, well, where is the negative 2? When you make compounds, you take those charges and you crisscross them, and the charges will basically vanish. So when you see compounds, you will never see the charges. But they were used there to get the compound. So this is polyatomic number two. So technically you have ammonium, which is NH4, plus one, coming together with carbonate, which is CO3, two minus, two polyatomics, that is transferring of electrons. So this is an ionic compound. Now for this one, we gotta figure out the ions involved because it's an ionic compound. But the good thing about polyatomics, and I'll put that over here, polyatomics, charges will never change. So if you can just memorize those charges, they will never, ever, ever, ever change. For, reg for regular elements, like especially in the transition metals, the charges will change. But however, polyatomic ions, the charges will never change. So... NH4 was originally a plus one charge, and that was the ion for the first part of this. And then carbonate was a CO3 two minus charge, as per what was stated here. That never changes, and that was this part. So these were the two ions, NH4, CO3, two minus. Those are the two ions that came together to form NH4 two, CO3. And that's the end for this one. All right, so let's erase this. And now let's keep going. Next one, we got SR. And then in parentheses, we have H2PO4, 2. All right, well, we have strontium, which is SR. And where is strontium? Strontium is over here. Where are you? Here we are. Strontium, number 38, that's automatically a metal. So what does metal say? Metals are ionic compounds. They make ionic compounds. So right off the bat, we know that this compound is ionic. So we need to find out the ions. Well, strontium is in group two. So that means that strontium, when this broke down, SR had a plus two charge because strontium is in the plus two group. It's in the second group. And, rem and just know that your compounds will always break down into two things. So I'll always have two arrows. You'll never have three arrows. So that means that the rest of this has to go into another slot. And when you have multiple atoms coming together, this would be a polyatomic. Did you guys guess that? So it's not, it's, you know, it's multiple atoms. It's H, P, and O coming together in a single ion here. So it's got to be polyatomic. Poly means many atomic atoms. So many atoms coming together to have a charge. Now we just got to find out that one, H2, P, O, 4. And if I scan here, dihydrogen phosphate is H2, P, O, 4. And remember, the polyatomic charges never change. So H2PO4 with a minus 1. And those are the two um, ions that come together. So it would be SR2 plus coming in with H2PO4 minus 1. And that's that. D 
is good. Next, let's erase this. Moving on, we got IBR. So where is iodine and where is um, bromine? Ooh, that just came back from the dead, right? So IBR. Actually, I won't do that. Where is iodine and where is bromine? Iodine is right here and bromine's right above it. Oh, there are two non-metals, no metals here, so this is covalent. So this is a covalent compound. That one was pretty simple. And for covalent ones, we don't have to give the ions because covalent compounds share electrons. They don't transfer them. That's why there are no ions. And then last but not least, let me erase this. Last but not least, we have Na2O. Well, we have sodium and we have just oxygen. So sodium is over here. Sodium is automatically a metal. And every time that we see a metal, a metal is a ionic compound. So that answers the first part. Now we just have to find out what this breaks down into. Remember, there's always going to be two groups that it breaks down into. And there's only two elements here, so it has to be sodium combined with an oxygen. Sodium, just like we have here, is in group one, so that would be a plus one charge. Sodium has a plus one, which means that it will lose one electron. And oxygen is over here in group 16, and group 16 is always a negative two. So that's how you find the um, oxidation states there. So it would be Na plus 1 and O2 minus or minus 2, whatever you want to put. But those are the end. You know, those are the, the ending answers. But that's it. So there was four ionic compounds and two covalent compounds. So, guys, a lot of stuff went into this question. Remember your common polyatomic ions. It will help you so much out in the end. Memorize your oxidation state trend. Know where your metals, non-metals, metalloids are. Um, you see how basically chemistry is, is coming together and basically you can't forget anything. So it's just going to keep combining and combining on top of each other. But I'll be here for you guys all along the way. All right. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. If you wouldn't mind, hit the subscribe button, help the channel out. We're trying to get to everybody around the world who uses OpenStax as their textbook in either high school chemistry or college chemistry. So that would be kind of cool to build a, a little community. Thank you so much for that. I'll see you guys in the next question. Happy studying.